Hey guys, it's John from John's DIY Playground. Today I'm very excited to review a product that's not really out in the market yet, but soon will be. It's uh, from our friends to the north, from the Onion Corporation, and uh, the product is called the Onion Omega 2 Plus, is what I got in the mail. So this is it here. Um, these guys are located, like I said, in Canada and Markham. Um, it's marketed as like a $5 computer as well. Um, competitors would be like the Raspberry Pi and the chip, which I'll go over in a minute. But um, come in this box. This may not be what the end production price or uh, produ production packaging looks like because it says just expansion dock. But I got more than that in the box today. I've got the expansion dock itself, which you got to have some sort of dock. There's several docks that you can get that work with this, even ones that are lower profile than this, not as big. Um, I'll show that on the website um, in just a moment. And then the other thing they have. Um, are a lot of expansion docks that, that are stackable off this GPIO here. So this is the actual Onion Omega 2. Um, this is the plus version. So the plus version means it has more memory. It's got 32 megabytes of flash storage on board. It also has this uh, um, micro SD card slot on the bottom which the $5 version doesn't have. This plus version costs $9 US as of uh, posting on its website December of 2016. Um, some other basics about this thing, it has um, 15 GPIO ports, uh, two pulse width modulated ones, two UARTs, um, one I squared C, one SPI, one I squared S. Um, supports USB 2.0, has a 580 megahertz CPU um, and 128 meg of RAM. So to get started, out of the box, it's supposed to be able to go up and running. So I'll explore that with you on the computer shortly. Um, you would just put it on like so. I don't want to break anything. And it's not populated on the bottom. And you can tell the direction it should fit on because the way the thing's cut, short cut here, longer cut there gives you your orientation. Looks like it's got a chip antenna for Wi-Fi available and a, uh, a one where you can plug in an external antenna, which is nice. There's a switch to power on and off. Looks like a reset button. Then we're going to power in through micro USB. It's got this other USB out as well. All your expansion and GPIO is here. You can see it's really nicely labeled. I really like how they put that on there. It made a great contrast, great uh, appearance. So uh, size-wise and comparison-wise, um, here we have the $5 computer called Chip. Uh, many of you have seen my, my uh, video review of the Chip some time ago and love the background music. You all have commented about how much you love it. So please check that out if you haven't. And then this is the lo and behold the Raspberry Pi. So form factor wise um, it's smaller than the Raspberry Pi even with the expansion board. And like I said you can get an expansion power board that's about the same exact size as this Omega 2. Um, so in that case then it would be much smaller even than this chip. Um, I am going to head over to my uh, PC and fire up that um, and see if we can get it uh, up and running through their I guess graphical user interface. You can also do it by command line. I've pulled up the company's website and by the way before uh, we go too far I forgot to mention the Omega 2 does come with onboard Wi-Fi. It supports all the latest 802.11, BG and N standards. Um, that's standard with either the $5 or the $9 version. Um, the thing about the store I wanted to show you guys is um, they've got the original Omega still here, but it looks like this one's going to be going to the wayside when the new one ships. And that uh, also on the expansion board, you notice that there was like a full size USB port there. Um, that's for something like if you were going to put uh, Bluetooth here. If you want to put a little dongle on there for Bluetooth, then boom, you've got that. The other thing that's really cool is one of the expansion docks that it does have is one that can support cellular. So if you don't just want Wi-Fi and you want to go cellular, it's possible to do that with uh, this unit. Um, they're broadcasting here at the Omega 2, which is what we've got here today. It takes you over to um, one of the Indiegogo um, descriptors and a video about it and a lot of the expansion boards that I had mentioned. Um, I just wanted to go through this really quickly and show you what some of the things we can do with it. It looks like it's got a cloud um, app. You can go through the cloud and do that. That's optional. Um, we might try that today. I think we will. Um, some of the Linux stuff, it comes preloaded with Linux. I didn't mention that either in, in the last segment. 
Um, but yes, you can control this thing through the cloud. So I want to test that out a little bit. And um, this is how the expansion boards would fit together, stacking um, double wide uh, GPIO ports. Um, not too much else to say other than I just wanted to try this as a first timer. I haven't fired this thing up once yet. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking at my main computer's uh, you know, lower right dock to see what happens. And I've got a mini USB um, here, so I won't have I don't have two uh, cameras to show you what's really going on as I plug it in. But I'll explain. And I'm about to plug into the expansion dock right now with the micro USB plugged into my Windows-based PC, which has the Apple Bonjour service, which was um, one of the requirements. It said um, because I have iTunes installed, Bonjour is already there. So I'm plugging in right now. And so I see the lights come on. I can see a light on the expansion boards on. Um, must mean I'm powered up. So what I'm looking for is to see what comes up in the dock. If it's telling me that it's installing new hardware, I just saw the mouse do a little bit of a little busy uh, circle to it. So it looks like something's being recognized. The light is flashing on the Omega 2. And my understanding is when it's flashing, it's going through its boot up phase. So. Um, I'm not sure how long this boot up phase is going to take, maybe just a matter of a few more seconds if it's a typical Linux type of setup. They really don't use a lot of overhead. And of course this thing doesn't have any uh, video output that I can tell. We're going to be running this headless um, through either PuTTY or through this graphical interface over this cloud, um, which is fine for me because it uses less power. Um, it's still flashing as we're going through this right now, and um, I will speed up the video to uh, help quicken this so you don't have to sit here and listen to me blab. Boot up time took about two minutes, and the flashing stopped, and we have solid light on the Omega 2 right now. In the meantime, I went to the wiki, and there's no Onion 2 wiki yet. It's being done over on GitHub on a different site. It's not just launched yet. But there is a get starting guide for the Omega, and I was hoping to try and use this in order to um, walk through this in my first try. And of course, I, like I said, I'm using something that's not even available yet really to the public, so I'm going to run into some problems. So this was my first problem. Went solid, and then I was going to try to log into the Onion Omega 2 for the first time and look for its Wi Fi signature there. I'm, my computer I click here I can see it here the 2954 is important I can click on it and say connect automatically well then it's saying enter a network key I don't know what the key was so I had to do some digging um, actually in uh, one of the communities uh, one of the topics I found talks about the Omega 2 and its default password apparently it's one two three four five six seven eight that's one of the dumbest passwords only an idiot would have on his luggage. So let's see if it works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remembering, 2954 is the next important number. And no internet, but we're secured. So that's good. It looks like we made it. What we want to do is open another uh, page. And the 2954 is part of the instructions. You do Omega Dash and then whatever your numbers are dot local because we are now connected by Wi-Fi from my PC to the Omega 2. So if I click on that and pull up that, hopefully what we're doing is we're accessing the Wi-Fi server that's on the Omega 2 to serve up what should be our setup pages. And as you can see right now, it doesn't look like it's working for me. Let me try to refresh the page and see if it comes up. Um, let me dig into this as a looks like a second problem I've run into. Um, let's uh, I'll look in the wikis and come back to you guys. So lo and behold, I just had to read a little further. I was following the instructions from the original Onion Omega here, trying to do this trick with the local. And then it says if it doesn't work, you can also try to browse to this URL. So I was like, huh, let me try that. So I come over here, hit that, and bam! Look at that. So there's the Omega 2 setup wizard. Um, I'm just going to walk through some of these steps here. If I have any problems, I'll report them, but um, I'm not going to bore you with all these details.
So after much fiddling around, um, trying different power supplies, connecting to my computer, not connecting to my computer, I could not get the graphical interface to configure for my Wi-Fi. So I'm just scrapping that plan and right now um, what we're going to do is um, try to connect over the wire, um, over USB. So I'm plugging in the USB to my computer again into the mini USB of the Onion Omega 2. And I use Arduino a lot, and uh, it was last program on COM5. Um, COM1 is always showing up on my list. COM3 popped up, so it kind of tells me that's probably where the onion is hanging out on COM3. So what we do is we bring in a program called Putty. It's a free program. And click on Serial, and we're going to put COM3. And it's very important for the speed. You put 115, 200, and then hit Open. Um, it's going to bring up a terminal window that I'm dragging in here. Looks like nothing's happening, right? Try to hit the enter key. So right there, you're already logged in as root. Um, if you need credentials, I think uh, passwords and uh, usernames are up here in the help too. You can use, I'm sorry guys. Um, let me pull this back up real quick. But the username of root, password, onion ear, try that if you're getting prompted for a username and password. I'm not. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm trying to set up the uh, Wi-Fi by wire here. So there's an application called Wi-Fi Setup. <clears throat> so coming back to Putty, all I have to do here is type Wi-Fi Setup. And um, you would first scan for Wi-Fi networks with option number one. It'll take a look around and see what's in your area. I've got number two is mine. I've already configured it with the password, so I'm not going to show that part. Um, so I'm just going to exit out of the thing with a control C. Um, after that, it says run whoop grade in the serial terminal to get the latest firmware. So I'm going to do that right now and run out grade. And let's see if that actually starts working. It does. So let me cut the video off here and we'll come back when it's done. Hey, so I'm back. Well, if you're keen to the time frame here, uh, it's actually a day later since I last left you guys in the last clip. I was going to upgrade, um, but it didn't happen. I was having Wi-Fi problems big time. And after looking into the, pulling my hair out, just about all of it, and uh, finally then going to the forums this morning and leaving a message, I got almost instant response guys it was a really um, good response over at the onion uh, onion.io forum on what I could try to help resolve the problem and I was able to fix it so the one thing you had to note um, that I learned with my router is that actually um, it wants to use TKIP and the onion wanted AES uh, WPA algorithm that's why it wasn't working uh, that was the main cause I can't get this thing to change over for some reason so what I did instead was I went and explored into um, the Onion Omega 2 itself and you can see there's a wireless um, file that is for configuration just called wireless under etc config uh, directory but I made a file called generic just to show you guys so I don't have to show you my username password stuff. Um, but here it is. This is what the file should look like, at least in my setup here, under the configuration in December of 2016. Um, what I did is this TKIP, I changed that part. Um, and then just so you all are clear on how the rest of the config file should look, um, it kind of bounces back and forth about AP client and then the SSID and key. So when it's talking about this SSID and key, it's talking about your Onion Omega. It's not talking about your home system. And then when you're talking down here later, it's uh, this AP client. You're using your home router's SSID and password. It's different than these um, here, this SSID and, and key, which is the password you would use to connect with your Onion. Um, I hope that's clear. If you have any questions, please leave them in the um, comments box below. And then again, for your Wi-Fi config, again, your home router SSID goes here. 
and then your type of encryption and your password but the key for me was that encryption type being TKIP to match what my router had so once I did that um, everything was up and running I have the latest firmware um, it loads this um, onion IO where you can actually interact with your device over the web on the cloud um, I find this to have the feel kind of like um, particle photon in a way um, which is a great device I also reviewed on some other of my uh, DIY videos so check those out too but so far so good I'm gonna explore a little bit further with this guys and um, see what else is uh, possible compare and contrast but I'm giving it a thumbs up so far but this is also again all beta software I'm using it's not quite out released to the general public so I understand having this little hiccup um, could be understood and uh, and really in the end it was on my side that I had the router setting not set to what the onion wanted anyhow if you like this video give me a thumbs up and click subscribe um, for more alerts to when I release new videos this is John from John's DIY playground have a great day